Look, I already know all your life you've heard. Don't seek revenge. Turn the other cheek. It doesn't matter if the person did this to you. Just forget about them. It's not worth it. Don't go for revenge. Revenge is a negative emotion. It's not something you need to tap into. And I'm here to tell you that that's complete BS, all of it. See, revenge is one of the most powerful things that you can ever tap into as a man. And you need to understand the nuance of what I'm saying. I'm not saying you go out and you seek out physical revenge on somebody. But there's something where it's almost like mental revenge. And this is something that I've had to analyze for a long time because I've gone through a lot of traumatic events at, when I was young. And, and here's the thing about traumatic events. Traumatic events are only that to the person. It's not, it, it's, trauma is not a general term. It can mean something different to everybody, right? So something that I can find that's traumatic may not be something that you even find that's traumatic. So like, I'll give you a good example. When I was younger, I was about in eighth grade. My biggest dream, like literally my, my dream was to play basketball for the eighth grade basketball team. It all happened last minute. I had never touched a basketball before that, didn't play, but I really wanted to make the eighth grade team. And I remember it was a big deal to go try out for the eighth grade basketball team. Everybody was trying out, all the, all the jocks and everybody were, were trying out. And to be honest, I was a nerd. Like I was a, I was one of those dorks that could have been cool, but wasn't because I was so eclectic. I really liked, I was in band. I was, I was, you know, I played the piano. I did so many things like that just wasn't the stereotypical jock-like person. I wasn't into sports at all because I grew up in Brooklyn. My mom didn't let me go outside to go play basketball. I was always sheltered. So I see that basketball is the status symbol at my school, and I really want to be on the team. And the funny part is I was 5'9 at the time, or 5'8", 5'9". Um, I was super lanky, super uncoordinated. And I remember, you know, I would play basketball during lunch, with the kids, like I would see all these, all the, 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 the popular kids would play basketball. I wanted to go play and they would make fun of me because I didn't know how to shoot. I didn't know how to properly shoot the ball. I didn't know how to properly dribble. I was losing the ball. I, I like was doing the little double taps that people do when they never knew how to play basketball. I just looked like crazy. And I remember I had trained a little bit. I had started to shoot around at my, at my park, neighborhood park. And I thought I was going to be ready to try out. Long story short, we go for tryouts and I fail miserably, right? I don't make the team. I don't even make second tryouts. And I remember coming out of the locker room, coming out of, of that building. And, you know, they put the names of everybody who moved forward and everybody just laughing at me, just completely laughing at my, my failure of this. They knew I really, like I'd always said, I really want to make the basketball team. I'm going to make the basketball team. I really, really want to do this. And when I got cut, the first cuts, it it literally ate inside of me. I know you felt this before. I know there's been an experience where, and, and usually trauma comes from embarrassment, right? And for me, that was one of the most embarrassing moments of my life because I hung my entire persona around being a basketball player on the eighth grade team. And that was shattered in real time after tryouts. So I got to a point where I was sick and I didn't know what to do. I literally, everyone was laughing at me. I was walking through the hall with girls were laughing at me. People who I thought were my friends were laughing at me saying, oh, like, of course he didn't make it. Like, he's just this, he's just this little monkey that runs around and doesn't know how to play sports. And the rage that I had, I can't even explain to you how much rage I had. And I got to a point where I was like, I'm going to, I'm literally going to prove, and I can't cuss on here because I, you know, I'm, I'm early on YouTube, so I'm trying to figure it out, but I'm going to look at all of you guys very, very soon, freshman year, I'm going to make the team and I'm going to beat all of you guys out every single one in my head. And I was so furious. I was so mad. I went home and cried. I went home. My mom was like, what's wrong? I was like, I didn't make the team. I went into the room and I just bawled my, my eyes out for hours. I was crying in my room. Because my dreams were collapsed and I, I was made fun of by everybody. I didn't want to go back to school the next day, the next week, until the next year when we went to high school. But that was one of the greatest things that could have ever happened to me because that trauma, what I had experienced, had propelled me to then train every single day. Literally that week after, I dedicated every single day of my entire eighth grade 
rest of the year, summer, while they were playing in games, they were happy. You know, they, everyone was still making fun of me every day. The people remember that I didn't make the team. It's crazy. Like, it, it didn't go away. People were still making fun of me. People were still, during lunch, they wouldn't pick me for basketball because they were like, oh, he sucks. He didn't make the eighth grade team. I was training every single day, man. In the school. And if you know Arizona, I lived in Arizona. Scorching sun. So I moved from Brooklyn to Arizona when I was 10. And during that time, man, even now, it was 115 degrees every day during the summer. And I just went hard. I would watch Kobe Bryant drill videos. I would try to imitate the drills that they were doing. I'd use two balls. I, I, I convinced my mom to buy me two basketballs. We didn't really have money at the time like that. We were living in these apartments. And I was just playing in the apartment gym, two balls. People would literally walk by and see me every day. And I went hard like that every single day. Five hours a day, I was out. Scorch, I literally turned purple. Like I was black when I started, I turned purple after. That's how dark I got. And I just kept going and I just kept trying this. I kept going and I kept going. And I was shooting. I was doing a bunch of shooting drills. I was mastering my form. I was getting close. I was mastering my form. I was, I was going, I was going, I was going. And I got to a point, man, like I had this opportunity. One of my closest friends at the time, man, like his uncle had this AAU basketball team for the summer. And he was like, hey, I've seen you work a lot. I've driven around and I've seen you work. I want you to join this AAU basketball team and really learn how to play basketball. So I go, man, I put in the work and I sucked. I came into that AAU team and I couldn't play. But every single time in the back of my head, I could remember those kids making fun of me about how I was a monkey when I played basketball and how I would never amount to anything if it ever came to sports and basketball. And I, I pro it propelled me to freshman year being one of the best players on the team. And all of those other kids that made the team in, on the eighth grade team either were not playing, got no minutes, or they got cut. And that propelled me forward. And I used that, that memory every single day with every practice, with every game, up until my senior year, up until my freshman year of college when I actually went to go play Division Three basketball. I kept that memory every single day and it drove me. And I give you this long-winded story because you have something that somebody has done to you that has embarrassed you, whether it be a woman that cheated on you for somebody who had more money than you because you were broke or cheated on you for someone who looked better than you physically, right? And you 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 just weren't there, right? Cheated on you, uh, left you, whatever that looks like. You, there's something that happened to you that was embarrassing that you are burying, bur burying right now inside of you that you do not want to let out. You do not want to use it, but I'm, I'm giving you permission in this video to pull that memory out every single day and use it to propel you forward. Revenge is one of the greatest things you can ever tap into. I promise you, it's one of the greatest things I've ever tapped into. There are so many different things in my life where I was embarrassed going to school and getting made fun of because I didn't have the right basketball shoe or I didn't have the right shoes. I had these, um, these cheap shoes. This was everything happened in seventh and eighth grade, I guess. I had these like, um, the, these knockoff Jordans that I wore and everybody made fun of me. Every, I, I didn't have any, my parents didn't have any money I, during lunch. Every kid was going like they were getting their own food and, and I was, they were able to buy food at lunch and I had to go get the, the free food, the food for, 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 um, kids who didn't have enough money to be able to pay for lunch. Right. So you could tell who was who, and I would get made fun of for that. And that drove me to become an entrepreneur when I was in high school to, to, you know, flip flip packs of famous Amos cookies. My parents would buy them in bulk and I would flip them for like two, three dollars a piece. Right. And I would sell like 30 or 40 of them a week and be able to buy lunch for myself, be able to buy other people lunch. I like that drove me to, to to go that route. And that same memory drives me in entrepreneurship today to make more money all the time. I'm telling you, there are certain memories that you have that will literally propel you to success if you if you just allow yourself to think about it and remove this societal brainwash that revenge is not important. Revenge is something that's bad. Revenge is one of the greatest things you can ever tap into if it is not physical. You do not want to physically in inflict pain on people. You want to mentally inflict pain. Even in relationships, if she cheats on you, you need to tap into the revenge side of things. Again, not physical, but mental. Become better. 
That is the whole point of revenge. Revenge makes you become better. You you destroy people who have embarrassed you through the betterment of yourself, through self-improvement. You improve so much that you become a different person. And that same person in their head is like, why did I embarrass that person? Why did I make fun of that person? Why did I do that person dirty? Look at them now. I want to be able to go talk to that person. And then they go hit you up. Those same people are reaching out to you. And you know you have the option now. You can bring them in. You can bring them back in at a lower level from your perception. Or you can just cut them all out and be like, nah, you're not good enough for me. That is the ultimate revenge. That is... Becoming greater than the people who tried to bring you down at your weakest moment is the greatest revenge you will ever taste in life. I promise you. It, it, it literally, just seeing myself start on that basketball team and all of those other kids that made fun of me getting cut and not playing, not getting any minutes, that literally made me so content. That, that drove me. So much to see that. That was the sweetest revenge I could have ever had. And that's all you need is that is is that self-improvement arc that moves you beyond the person that had embarrassed you. That's what you need to focus on. Becoming the best version of yourself to prove everybody else wrong. I know it sounds not cliche, but it, it sounds almost like hostile. And oh no. You should not care what anybody thinks. I think you should care what people think in terms of how they embarrass you. If somebody embarrasses you, you need to embarrass them back by getting better, by becoming better than them, by becoming a better version of yourself that surpasses what they embarrassed you on. I'm telling you, I'm giving you full permit. You got to go do it. You tap into those, those different parts of you that were embarrassed when you were young. Maybe it was your speaking ability. People laughed at you or even family members laughed at you because you spoke in a weird way. Start improving your speech. Become a master communicator. Start talking in front of the camera. You need to find these things that people embarrassed you about and embarrass them by by proving them wrong and surpassing them and not even looking back at them. I hope this video inspired you to go tap into the revenge part of your, your soul and get those traumatic memories, those embarrassing memories that you don't even want to look at anymore. You don't even want to think about and use those as fuel. I hope you like this video. Comment, like, subscribe, share with a friend who, you know, is trying to find that edge, trying to find how they can self-improve. Share this video with them. Rewatch this video if you need to. Also sign up to my free newsletter. We talk about this stuff in depth three times a week. We send out emails to help you become a multi-dimensionally jacked man, physically, spiritually, financially, socially, mentally. You need all five jacked to be multi-dimensionally jacked. Appreciate you again. I'm going to catch you on the next video.